As I was running through many different visual novels, I was very surprised to see the vast majority made no use of any transitions other than your average fade in and fade out technique. Sure, that's not bad, and it's definitely no reason to avoid a VN, that's for sure, but it was still surprising because it's actually very easy to do. An example of a novel that uses more stylish transitions is Sakura Fantasy, which I've made mention of many times in this series, probably because that's the style I'm most attempting to emulate. These special transitions, while they do nothing to add to the story, they do add to the experience of the VN by offering aesthetics we otherwise wouldn't have. Fading is a little bland, stylized transitions are eye-catching, but a mixture of the two makes for great transitions throughout the VN. So how do we do this? First off, the transitions are going to work using grayscale images, where white or black represents full transparency. All of these images, as well as the shader we'll be using, will be posted in the description down below. Import the shader into your project and place all of the transition effects in a transition directory in your resources folder. Mine is just inside the images directory. Then create a material that will use our shader. Locate the shader under custom and transition effect. And now we have the material to handle our special transitions. Don't worry about the base texture field up there, we're never actually going to use that. All we need to worry about is the mask texture. This is where our grayscale images will go depending on the transition we want to use. So first, let's make a dedicated overlay panel that will use these effects to show and hide the entire scene on command. It's important that we make the panel a raw image, because that's how we'll be able to assign the material. Then give it some name to identify what it is. I'll just call mine Overlay Panel. Scale it to the size of the canvas, and maximize its anchors so it grows with the game window. To start using the material, assign it to the raw image, and immediately you should start seeing it work. The reason we have white is because no texture is assigned on the raw image component. For now, expand the material so we can edit some values. Cutoff tells the material how far in the transition to be, where 0 means the raw image should be completely visible, while 1 means it's completely cut off. Now we probably want a black image as our overlay so we can get some nice in and out transitions for our entire scene, so make a pure black texture and assign it to the raw image since the color field has no effect. Alright, but the transition looks very sharp and blocky here. We can change it with the cutoff range of our material. Lowering the value makes the transition sharper while raising it makes it much smoother. For me, I prefer using a value of 0.65. And now our transition looks pretty good, I've got to admit. And when you want a different effect, it's just as easy as changing the mask texture. So that's great, but this can be used to bring in other textures as well, such as for different layers when you change from one background to another. This is simply controlled by the texture assigned on the raw image component and using the cutoff to gradually introduce it to the scene. When used on a layer instead of our overlay panel, this gives us a wide array of transitions for our layer images. But I'm going to keep the overlay set to black for fading my entire scene in and out. Alright, that's great and all, but we obviously want a method to automate this for us. So go into your scripts and make yourself a class to handle the special transitions. I'll simply call my script the Transition Master. Start by incorporating the UI namespace, just like that. And next, let's make our class statically accessible with an instance. Then give it a reference to both our overlay image, as well as the transition material we created. We want a reference for that so we can clone the material for our images, otherwise any changes we make will affect the source material, and in turn every image using it, which we don't want. So then in Awake, we want to make sure our overlay panel is using a clone instead of the original material. Get a clone by simply instantiating our material as a new instance. That's good. Alright, now let's make a function that'll show or hide our entire scene through a transition on the overlay image. Use a boolean for showing or hiding, a float for speed, and another boolean for smoothing, and lastly a texture for the transition effect. That would be our grayscale image. The last three parameters are optional, the texture being null by default. Of course, as with most of my transitions, we'll be using a coroutine for that. 
Don't bother using a boolean for this one unless you want to. Make these static, but not public, so we can still access them without them being available outside of the class. And if the coroutine is active, our instance not being null, then stop it by terminating the coroutine on the Transition Master's instance. Make a cache variable for knowing whether our scene is visible or not. This will be manipulated in the function below. And set it to equal the show value so we always update to the current visibility target of our scene. If the transition effect we pass in is not null, then change the effect set on the overlay panel's material to the one provided. Change it by accessing the texture field in the material called alpha text. Now call the coroutine on our instance. And make sure that the coroutine takes the speed and smooth values as well. Now it's time to determine what our visibility target should be. Make a float for a target value and set it to 1 if show is true and 0 if it's false, and get our current value by retrieving the current cutoff value already on our material. Now, for as long as the current value has not reached the target value, loop and yield. Then move the current value towards the target value using move towards or lerping, depending on the smooth value assigned. And most importantly, assign the new current value to the cutoff of the overlay's material. This will give us the transition we're looking for. And at the end, make sure the coroutine instance is set to null when it completes. Also, make sure this statement checks if transitioning overlay is not null. So in Unity, assign the transition master to an object and set the overlay panel as well as the source material. And to spare myself a testing script, I'm going to test locally within the transition master's update function. By showing the scene to the opposite status of scene visible, I'll toggle the scene in and out with a space key. And lucky for me, that works exactly as I need it to. Now let's change the transition effect for a moment. There we go. Right, I'm not gonna lie, that actually looks pretty good. But that's only half of our goal. Now we need to transition images on the layers themselves. So that means using snazzy transitions for our backgrounds, cinematics, and even foregrounds. Let's start by making a new public static method for transitioning a layer. We'll want the same parameters as above, substituting show for the layer we want to manipulate. And give a texture for the image we want to display as well. A texture for the transition. Then our optional speed and smoothing. Rather than cache the coroutine on our transition master when we handle layers, let's cache the coroutine inside the layer. So make a variable for that inside of your layer controller. Inside the call, duplicate our precautionary termination, this time the coroutine being inside the layer we're affecting. Transitioning to a new image and transitioning to nothing at all are two completely separate techniques, so they'll need two separate coroutines. Also, if it's null, we don't even need a target texture, so we can remove that parameter. So start one of those coroutines based on the texture being null or not. Also, make sure the coroutines are static. So let's say we do have a texture. Our first goal is to create a new raw image for the layer. Clone the new image reference of the layer and activate its game object since it should be disabled. Once it's activated, we're safe to retrieve the raw image component from it, so do that. Set its texture to the target image. Then add it to the layer's list of all images and set it as the layer's active image.
After that, we need, the, we need to set the material of the raw image to a clone of the transition material. So set the material's alpha texture to the transition effect. And since we want to transition it into a scene, we need the starting cutoff to be a value of 1. Then get our current value as 1 and move it until it reaches 0, using moving or lerping as we did before. Also update the actual cutoff of the material while doing so. Once our texture is fully in, we need to remove the material so we can use its normal alpha channel again, in case we want to use the layer's default transition method, but we can only do this if the image has not already been destroyed. Now you may wonder why would we worry about it being destroyed, because I'm anticipating the event of someone rapidly skipping through events in our visual novel, which would risk overlapping this transition with the default layer uh, fading. And as you remember in our global functions, once an image reaches zero alpha, even though it wouldn't show on a raw image using this material, the image would still reach zero alpha and then be destroyed. So these two transitions overlapping need a safeguard put in place, and that's checking if the image is null. So if the image has not been destroyed, remove the material, and being that new images spawn with zero alpha, use global functions to set the alpha of our new image to one. Finally, loop through all of the images on the layer, and if the image is not the active image, or the active image is not null, then remove the image from the scene and the layer. and in it by cleaning the coroutine reference from the layer. Okay, so we can transition to an image, but now we have to transition a layer to nothing at all. I said the two were different, and you're about to see why that is. So let's go ahead and get started. To transition a layer out, we need to transition all images out. So get all of the raw images on a layer and set the materials to clones, then set the cutoff values to zero. Make sure to use the set alpha text as well, so they'll use their transition effects. Get a current value of 0 and then transition it all the way up to 1. But this time instead of just updating one image, we have to update them all. And for the love of god, don't forget to yield, otherwise you'll enter a permaloop and unity will crash. Okay, so now comes the moment of destroying our image. And clear the list when we're finished. Now Unity's telling me we've got some errors, so let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, my little typo there, minus should be equal. There we go. What have we got now? Destroy has an invalid argument. Oh yeah, okay, so it sees my 0.01 value as a double instead of a float. So remedy that by appending the F character to the end of that number. Now hopefully Unity will be happy. Alright, cool. Just some warnings, but we'll take care of that at a later time. Okay, now, shame on me. It turns out I'm going to make a testing script for the Transition Master after all. So, let me go into my testing folder and make a new script to do that. Just because we're going to have a bunch more stuff on here. This testing script is going to have several textures for images we want to transition to, as well as several textures for the transition effects I want to use. We'll have an integer for the progress, we'll control events that way. Then my up and down arrow keys will control the progress and call events. The down arrow will decrement my progress and rewind events, while the up arrow will increment the progress. Then a switch based off of the progress integer will call different events from my transition master. The first thing I'll do is hide the scene, then I'll show the scene.
Then I'm going to transition a layer to my first texture and first transition. After a few of those, I'm going to throw in a default transition directly from a layer so I can see what happens when I rapidly move through the events and have them overlap with each other. This will kind of be a form of error testing, because I'm pretty sure something's going to happen. A few more, and then I transition to Null with the master, then fade out again and make sure the scene is still visible. Then I hide the scene for the final event, so this uses everything on the Transition Master, and even throws in Risk by using the BCFC transitions as well. So let's add that script to the testing object, and set the textures, and play the game. Alright, so my first event works, scene is hidden, now it shows true, we've got our town, alright, that all looks pretty nice. All those transitions are functioning well. Fading works alongside it. Okay, transition to null works, and that was very key. Alright, good. Everything looks to be going pretty good, so I can go ahead and skip rapidly. Everything still appears to work, though it's a little hard to tell. Uh, yep, there it is, just like I thought there would be. We have ourselves an issue, ladies and gentlemen. When I overlap the transition to null, as well as the layer fading, once the transition ends, it removes all images, including the image that was coming in after the start of that transition to null. See how it keeps snapping my background to black? See that? Transition to Null has no regard for images that are called in after the transition start. It just removes everything, even when it's not supposed to. So to fix that, we just gotta make that function a little smarter. We don't want it to affect images that come after the transition, so we need to cache only the images active at the start of the coroutine. Then we assign a material and log each image into that cache. Then instead of removing all images in the layer, remove all images in the cache. Remove the image from the scene if it's not null, and remove it from the layer if it's still in the layer's image list. And that looks like it takes care of the issue. So now we have working transitions besides just the default fading. Go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back for throwing some style into your VN. And go ahead and, and try making some of your own grayscale transitions. Experiment around, see what looks good, see what suits your desires. And using what you've learned from the previous videos, you can go ahead and add these commands to your novel controller and command file. They'll add a lot of extra allure to your chapters. Just don't overuse them because too much of anything isn't just bad, it's annoying. <laughs>